today we are looking at the top 10 most valuable and historically most important comic books published by DC with a cover date from the year 1955. Using this chart you can see the total number sales of comics of all titles combined for DC and Marvel and you can see that DC due to the sheer power of their biggest titles, was outselling Marvel and Atlas throughout the 1950s into the late 60s before Marvel overall sales would take over. Today we're counting down the top 10, so let's dive in. The number 10 most valuable DC comic of 1955 is Brave and the Bold, number 3. And what I want you to notice on this chart here is all the new titles that DC started in 1955, Brave and the Bold would be by far the most important and longest running title that they debuted in 1955, so the early issues are all key books. You'll also see that the romance title Falling in Love debuted this year and would run for 18 years, and My Greatest Adventure would also run lengthy for 9 years. So number 10 of the year, Brave and the Bold number 3. Let's find out why it's so important and why it's so valuable. It's the third issue of the iconic title. It features the Viking Prince, the Silent Knight, and the Golden Gladiator, Russ Heath and Joe Kubert art in this issue. It's the number 10 book of the year. Also ranks as the 127th most valuable DC comic of the 1950s. On the census, this book is very rare in all conditions. Only 34 copies ever graded. Three grade 9.0 or higher on the census. And Heritage Auctions has sold 15 copies since the year 2000, which is less than a copy a year. Yellow background cover on this 10 cent cover price book, now approved by the Comics Code Authority, which had just started up uh, this year, in fact. Using the Overstreet Annual Price Guide, we can compare the growth of all grades over the last 13 years here. You can see not a lot of movement in lower grades overall. The book is approaching uh, doubling in price in higher grades raw in the next few years. And on the census overall, the highest copy graded is a 9.2, and there are two 9.0s. The number 9 book of the year on the census is Detective Comics 226. This is the second appearance of the Martian Manhunter, which was the biggest, most important new superhero to debut from DC in 1955. And this finishes teaching his origin story, which had started in the last issue. He's the first new... Uh, major superhero and some people even like to say that Detective Comics 225 and 226 is the beginning of the Silver Age due to that fact. Yet Martian Manhunter would not appear on the cover of any comic book until he joined the Justice League of America five years later. Print run of this book estimated at 325,000 copies. Number nine book of the year at a rank ranks 86th of the 1950s for DC. This one a little more common. Of course, Batman was a big selling title. We got Batman and Robin on the cover. 77 copies graded by CGC. Only two in the world graded 9.0 or higher. Heritage has sold 39 copies of this book with a green background. And then the Overstreet Price Guide. A bit of movement in all grades continually every year. And uh, again, it's, it's just continually moving. And that's what you're going to find with all of these books. These books are rare. People want them. They cannot find them in any grade. And so they continue, continually climb in price. On the census, the highest grade is there are two 9.0s of this book. The number eight comic of the year is Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, number three. One of the most important titles launched last year. This is the last pre-comics code issue. You'll see that there's no Comics Code Authority stamp on the cover. That's because this has an early January 1955 cover date. This title would run 20 years. A very popular title for DC for a long time. It ranks 84th most valuable of the decade. 40 copies graded by CGC. There are no copies 9.0 or higher. Heritage has sold 25. Using the Overstreet Annual Price Guide, we can see, again, growth is steady. No major jumps, but always steady. But in higher grades, the book has actually done quite well. It has gone up two and a half times in this time frame in raw high-grade copies. And on the census, the highest graded copy is an 8.5. 
Number seven book of the year is Brave and the Bold, number two. It's the second issue, of course, featuring the adventures of the Viking Prince, the Silent Knight, and the Golden Gladiator. We have Irv Novik cover art here. Interior art by Russ Heath and Joe Kubert. 214,000 copies is the print run estimated of this title, rank 75th most valuable of the decade. There are no high grades of this book at all. They just are not out there. On the census, we have 44 copies graded in total. No super high grade copies. Heritage has sold 24. Using the Overstreet Price Guide, again, slight movement in lower grades, but the book has almost doubled in higher grades. And on the census, it's hard to believe, but the highest graded copy in the world of this book is a 7.0. This is an extremely rare book. And next on our list, the number six most valuable book of the year, Batman 92. This book features the first appearance of Ace the Bat-Hound, who's in the cover story. He is the canine crime fighter. Wynne Mortimer drew the cover art. Sheldon Moldoff, Charles Paris, and Stan K all did story art. Print run estimated at 500,000 copies, being one of DC's best-selling titles. It's the eighth most valuable Batman issue of the 1950s, number six book overall for DC of the year, and 70th most valuable of the decade. A lot more copies graded than this because Batman is the most highly collected title from DC. 164 copies graded, but yet only three, 9.0 or higher. Heritage has sold 38 copies. We got the Bat Signal on the cover and the Bat Mobile. Lots of price growth on this book. This book has really taken off in, in the recent past decade. In lower grades, you can see since 2005, the book has gone up over four times in price. And in high grade raw, it's gone up over four times price. It's really jumped. It's now at $4,000 for a 9.2. There is one 9.4 on the census and two 9.0s. Next on our list, in fifth place, is a special anniversary issue. It is Superman number 100, an iconic issue that DC's most popular character and really the most popular superhero in the world at this time reached the 100th anniversary. So they retell Superman's origin in this issue. Plus, you can see it re-shows the covers of issue 1, 25, 50, and 75. 10 cent cover price. Print run estimated at 810,000 copies. DC had a real big winner with Superman now for decades. And this would continue even into the 70s, being DC's big title. 51st most valuable DC comic of the decade. Lots of copies graded on this one. High demand. 278 copies in total, but only three 9.0 or better. Heritage has even sold 91 copies of this iconic anniversary issue however in the overstreet price guide we see sort of uh not big results as we'd expect not a lot of movement this because of the huge print run this is actually a way more common book compared to the other ones we've seen so far so it's actually stalled in all grades in the last year it's still an expensive book though uh, still a good long-term investment but you can see it just has small growth overall this book has not doubled yet even in the last 16 years and on the census, we have three 9.0s of this book. The number four DC comic of the year is My Greatest Adventure, number one. It's a number one issue, so of course it's important. And secondly, it ran for many years. Print run estimated at 208,000 copies. It's the 10th most valuable DC sci-fi book ever. The title running for nine years eventually would turn into Doom Patrol in 1963. On the census, we have 50 copies graded, no 9.0s or higher. Heritage has sold 36 of this bold, dark blue background cover book. In the Overstreet Price Guide, very little movement in low grades over the years. It's a slow mover, but in high grades, it's almost doubled. And on the census, there are eight or sorry, four 8.0s of this book. Nothing higher than that. Now we're getting into the really big books of the year. Brave and the Bold, number one, comes in in third place. Of course, it's the number one issue. 
of the most important new title of the year. There's our three big stars featured on the cover, and they would be in the next few issues as well. Print run estimated at 214,000 copies. 20th most valuable DC comic of the decade. A lot more copies on the census because everybody's seeking out this key number one issue. 110, still zero 9.0s or higher. Heritage has sold 50 copies of this dime comic. And in the Overstreet Price Guide, we can see the, the growth continually over the last 16 years on this chart I've made. And you'll see it still has only gone up about 50% in this time frame. But in high grades, it has more than doubled. And on the census, the highest copies graded is 8.0. Again, another super rare book in high grade. The number two comic of the year is my favorite. It is Adventure Comics 210. You might not think that another dog cover would be so valuable, but it's true. Crypto the Super Dog debuts in this issue with Superboy. This book, again, extremely rare. Print run was high, though, 438,000 copies. Anything to do with the Superman family was very popular at this time. Scarce in all grades. It's the 12th most valuable DC comic of the entire Silver Age. Only two copies grade above 8.0. On the census, we have 138 copies graded in total. There are two 9.0s or better. Heritage has sold 39 copies. And on the census, lots of demand. This book has more than doubled over the years. And it has more than tripled in high grade in the price guide. On the census, we have the two 9.0s and then one 8.0. And the most important iconic DC comic of 1955 by far is Detective Comics 225. The first appearance of Martian Manhunter, the Manhunter from Mars, his first appearance and origin. The most important superhero uh, character of the year. And some people dispute and say that this is the beginning of the Silver Age with this book. Even though he only had a backup feature and was not featured on the cover or any cover until he joined the Justice League of America uh, five years later. This is the number one valuable DC comic of the year. It also ranks fourth most valuable of the entire decade. It's the seventh most valuable first appearance DC comic of the decade. Print run estimated at 325,000 copies. Because of its high price tag, lots more copies graded on this one. 252 copies have surfaced, but only three, 9.0 or higher. Heritage has sold 71 of this cover featuring Batman and Robin with a, a bright yellow background cover. In the Overstreet Price Guide, you can see the demand has been huge for this book in the last couple decades. And hard to believe that at one time in the Overstreet Price Guide, this book was 75 cents for a near mint copy, but it's currently at $40,000. You can see it goes up a minimum of $1,000 a year now, but it's had some huge jumps in the past decade. So in low grade, we can see that the book has gone up four times in price, and in high grade, five times in price. This is the iconic DC book of 1955. The highest copy graded is a 9.4, and there are two 9.0s. Now, what I want to do quickly is let's compare all the top 10 on the CGC census so we can see how rare all these books are, but we can see the demand, the rarity, and just what's getting graded out there. The book with the most copies graded of them all is Superman 100 at 278 copies, and that makes sense because out of all of them, that's the book with the biggest print run, so that's the most uh, copies likely to have survived. After that, we have Detective Comics 225 that we just saw because it's such an iconic uh, key issue, first appearance of Martian Manhunter, but it's also a fairly popular title, so not too rare to find. At the bottom end, though, Brave and the Bold 2 and 3 are extremely rare, almost no copies graded, and that's also for Jimmy Olsen 3. And My Greatest Adventure, number one, surprisingly, is very low at only 50 copies for a number one issue. And again, in any grades, 9.0 or higher, you can see how books of this era just don't exist. Nobody was saving comics to keep them in good condition. Nobody bagged and board comics. These comics were not to ha thought of having any value. And these books would not have any value for at least a decade. So we're lucky to have the copies that we have of these books. So there you go. Some amazing books from DC, debatably the first year of the DC Silver Age. 
and we're going to continue this series week by week, so please subscribe and keep watching. Thanks.